I've been getting a ton of questions lately, all about this whole dry aging thing and why I hang my fish like that. Well, today I christened the new fridge. I got to put something in there and I'm going to bring you lot along and show you how it goes. Dry aging has got a lot of attention lately and I'd say there's some valid food safety concerns, but I think a lot of these can be addressed in the way that you source, store and prepare your catch. Store-bought fish must be the very freshest you can get. Ideally kept whole just to minimize any contact with fresh water as they'll use that to clean them when they gut the fish for you. Ideally the fish have also been bled and brained. Dry aging your catch starts all the way at the beginning of this story, not just in the game. So what is it? Well, basically it's a process of controlled evaporation over a period of days, which sort of firms the meat of the fish up, but also enhances the flavor profile of the fish. This is definitely something that can be done at home. In fact, it's been done around the world in one way or another forever. For me, it's something I've been figuring out over the last few years out of necessity. A large proportion of the food that I eat comes from the fish that I catch. And what I've realized is that all the fancy talk of dry aging aside, this is actually just hands down the best way to store fish that I've found. can be stored this way however the dry aging process is going to work far better with fattier fish with a much denser muscle structure fish like trevally kingfish bonito and recently what i've been enjoying goatfish are amazing dry age It makes these beautiful orange oils under their skin pop and I absolutely love it. Fish like Bonito benefit heaps from this process as well as their notoriously soft flesh firms up to hold its structure better when preparing them later on. The very first thing we do when securing our fish is to ikejime them. Ikejime is a Japanese method of quickly and humanely killing a fish to preserve the eating quality. It involves inserting a sharp spike or a knife, in my case, into the fish's brain, instantly immobilizing it and minimizing any stress. And this process prevents the release of stress hormones and enzymes that can affect the taste and texture of the fish. It's also just humane to dispatch your catch as quickly as possible. Secondly, we bleed the fish immediately after braining. We can cut the gills or even better, slice this little connective bridge between the body and the throat. There's a main artery in here and it'll quickly pump out any remaining blood. And both these practices are gonna improve the eating quality of a ton of fish that have been trashed in the community for a lot of years. Species like this Aussie salmon here have so much blood in them and it'll spoil so much quicker if you don't bleed them. Personally, I prefer to gut my fish in the water either immediately or pretty soon after shooting them. And part of this process is also removing the gills. Doing this also reduces the mess to clean up at home, keeping everyone happier. To chill my fish, I like to just use a clean esky and a bag of ice like this. I recently, just diving quick drives home, I actually leave the ice in the bag, which means I can freeze it when I get home and use it again next time. The main thing here is we want to minimize any contact the fish has with fresh water once it leaves the salt water. So on longer trips, I prefer to keep my fish upright in the esky and then I can fill ice around them and leave the bung out. And that means that any water that builds up gets the chance to drain away. The main thing is we don't want the fish swimming around in a puddle of their own blood and juices. It's these fluids that make their way into the meat and cause your fish to spoil quicker. When you store your fish in these kind of optimal conditions, this is when you can start thinking about consuming things like the liver or roe or any other bits of offal. So now we've got this beautiful goat fish home. We want to prepare it for the fridge. We're going to do this by drying it off first with some paper towel, making sure we've got any slime or any water from the esky all off the fish. I'm going to clean up the gut cavity as well. Scaling is kind of optional, but if you want to use the skin of the fish in any way, I definitely recommend scaling. So my favorite way to scale fish for the fridge 
is to use a Japanese technique called sukibiki. That just involves having a very sharp knife and if you don't already have a knife sharpening stone, I definitely recommend one. You can check out the description below and I'll have some links down there for one. And we'll just run the knife under the scales like you can see there, cutting off the scale pocket and the scale itself. So then we've just got the skin left underneath. And this means that there's no little pockets for moisture to get trapped in while this fish is in the fridge hanging and dry aging. This is just gonna help us reduce our chances of the meat spoiling even further. Something else I really love about scaling the fish like this is that you can use these scales if you dry them in the fridge for a few days. You can fry them in oil and make some beautiful little crispy chips out of them. And once again, at no point here am I using fresh water to clean this fish. We're cutting the scales off and then wiping it down with paper towel. So we go, our fish is all cleaned up. No more scales on it, no more liquid. Now, if you're a bit tight for space in the fridge at home, you can use something like this. We've got a tray and then a rack on top. And we're gonna put the fish on that rack and you can put it vertically with the wings split open or lay it down on its side as long as you are sort of moving it and rotating it and making sure it's staying nice and dry. The main thing here is that we wanna make sure there's plenty of airflow around this fish because if the fish is laying down and touching surfaces, it's gonna sweat and let go of its juices and it's gonna sit in those and spoil real quick. This is by far my favorite way to store the fish and that is to hang them from these little hooks that I made from coat hangers, just like that. And then we're gonna chuck in a little tray underneath, much like our other technique, just so we can catch any juices and we don't make a mess. And we are also going to chuck these scales in so we can make some beautiful little chips in a few days. I like hanging them from the tail like this because it means that any juices can just kind of drip down through the body and out. Some fish have a lot better tail structure like Bonito and Trevally and Kingfish and stuff. So I'll actually make a little uh, like twine or a little string noose thing around there and then I'll hook onto that. Now here's the nerdy numbers bit. If you can measure temps inside your fridge, you want it around minus one to one degree Celsius for the best results. As for humidity, keeping it somewhere around 70% is ideal. Unfortunately, this can be very difficult to control at home without expensive equipment. Proper dry aging fridges actually use a cooling element rather than the conventional fridges using a fan to circulate cold air. It's this fan that's gonna dry out your fish way quicker. And unfortunately, you're not gonna get these really long dry ages like some people are getting with tunas and mackerels. So I'm getting up to 28 days or so. Unfortunately, in a conventional fridge, your fish are just gonna dry out too quickly. I really like most fish after about three days, but I have pushed a lot of fish out to about seven days and they've been perfectly fine just like that. And these are just the basics, guys. I encourage you to experiment and record your results, see what works for you in your local area and what you like as well. And if you're keen to see what I do with this beautiful fish, make sure you're subscribed and you stick around for next week's episode.